happy to share some of my experience from Egypt in farming the desert. Um, and I want to clarify that I'm only a simple farmer from, from a developing country. I'm not a scientist. And I'm totally in love with uh, compost, so this maybe is a problem. But anyhow, I will try to explain what we are doing in our, in our, uh, in our project. And how did it start? It started in 1975 when my father took us, uh, and he's a born Egyptian, from Austria to Egypt to show us the country. And he got very worried about what he saw in Egypt, and he thought this unbelievable population growth, 20 million when he left in the 50s, Egypt, were 55 million in the 70s. Today we are 84 million. I don't know whether you can imagine what this puts as a pressure on this very narrow green uh, uh, spot around the Nile, but it means that Egypt is, uh, is in trouble ecologically, socially, culturally, economically, on all levels. Now, his idea was to reclaim desert soil through sustainable farming and on this sustainable farm to create a learning, living community tackling the social, cultural, ecological and economic issues of Egypt being an example for what is possible to be done for the future. Now, you know the story. Scientists from Austria, from Egypt, from everywhere in the world whom he consulted, told him, forget about, this is impossible, it will never happen, it cannot happen, it's, it's simply not uh, viable. Now he, as a crazy Egyptian visionary, went for a mission impossible. And against all odds, transforming the desert worked. A miracle happened, and out of sand and stones in the eastern desert of, of Egypt, a community evolved, an oasis where people, animals, plants live and work together, thousands of people, kids, where, where, where only was sand and stone at the beginning through compost, living soils evolved where we have all kinds of crops uh, available in Egypt. So people always ask us, of course, how is it possible? How did this miracle work? And I will try to touch on some of the factors, not all of them, of course. One, the most important, as I already mentioned, a miracle by itself, compost. We heard about it today. I can only reassure you that recycling plant and waste material into compost, into black gold for farmers, is a miracle by itself. It enabled us to create living soils. It enabled us to use 40% less water than our conventional neighbors. And for those who know something about Egypt, Egypt is importing 40% of its food today only because it's living below the poverty line of water. It's not an issue of land, it's an issue of we have no water. And by only going in sustainable farming, we would be able to get again to a self-sufficiency of 100%. It enabled us to sequester one ton of carbon per hectare every year for many, many years. And it enabled us to deal with the salt issue in the water, which is a major problem in conventional land reclamation. And it enabled us to aim for the impossible. If you see this, this is our last endeavor now in the Asian side of Egypt on the Sinai, where we started in 2008 on this, in this particular region, which, as you can see, is really, I think, clearly an agricultural area. And uh, with, w within this sand dunes, when we started in 2008, we were all thinking, how long will it take us to make another second there? What would you think? How long would it take? It took us 30 years in Sekem. It took us 18 months on the Sinai. With only compost, we had our first crop of peanuts after 18 months. And I invite all of you to come and see and share. But the miracle is possible. Now, would this have been enough for the miracle of Sekem? No. I want to be very clear. I have to disappoint you. Without managing our value, supply chain, without uh, closing the gap between farmers and end users, without having transparent pricing and fair trade pricing, without our partners 
in the value stream, in Egypt and outside Egypt. Some of them are here in the room. Without some crazy ethical banks investing into this not viable business model. And I hope Peter recognizes that the only reason why he is invited is because he invested in Sekem. Huh? <laughs> it would not have been possible for us to create the biggest local organic market in any developing country outside Europe, US, and Japan. 75% of what we produce on 20,000 acres with 2,000 employees is sold in Egypt. And we are market leaders competing with the conventional multinationals in our market, producing 500 million tea bags of herbal tea every year for the local market. And again, would this have been enough? No. Without our investment into the community, in a learning, living community in the desert, investing into our people, without giving them equal opportunity, respect, hearing to them, without our network worldwide, friends everywhere in Europe and the whole, uh, in any country in the world, helping us, giving us donations, helping us with ideas, good thoughts, work, Seikem would not be there. And without some of us, every day in the morning waking up and asking, what are we going to do different? Changing every day is the only, the only way to go forward. The day when we will be happy and successful, you can forget about us. And I can tell you this is one of the biggest challenges, success. I have experienced this on myself, and I want to warn you. When you are getting very, very successful, take care, it's corrupt. Yes. Now, still this is not enough. Without investing into every single human being on planet Earth, but for us in Sekem and any one of our people, our kids of the community, without trying to reconnect them to their real sources of inspiration, arts, religion, science, rebuilding the values, the enlightenment in Egypt, the enlightenment in the Islamic world will not happen. And this is what we are doing every day with hundreds of kids in our kindergartens and schools, with thousands of our people of the community in our medical center and adult education center, 400 students in our newly established Heliopolis University for Sustainable Development. Without all of this, it would have not worked. And it's complex. And if you search for a certain single indicator to measure and, and see what is, what is really going on, it's very difficult. It's very complex. And I think a reductionist point of view to it would never achieve what SACEM has achieved. Now, only in this holistic way, the miracle was possible. In 2007, we sat with our friends here from the Bilbao Desert Club. We established the Sustainable Development Flower, which is a set of indicators along all these uh, holistic sustainable development dimensions, ecological, cultural, social, and economic. 120 indicators which we use, and we publish our report as an annual report every year since 2007. So you are welcome to look on our website. A great management tool which helped us to get better and more competitive. And still, we had a problem. We were starting out as a model for Egypt, not only for a small community. And whenever we went out to promote these ideas, it got very clear that we have a single problem, that we are still more expensive on the farm gate. And then we said we have to do a study and we have to see whether this is really true, having in mind all the distortions and subsidies in Egypt. And we set up a comparative study of the full cost of production between conventional agriculture and sustainable agriculture, seven most important food crops, covering 65% of the food of Egypt. And we did a calculation for 10 years, 2011-2020, built on hard externalities only, so energy, fertilizer, water, carbon, no health impact, no environmental pollution, no social indicators. We took data from the Ministry of Agriculture, the FAO, and so on and so on. We had very conservative assumptions. And guess what? 
And I want to make sure that you can see and understand what is, <coughs> I did a mistake. Now what I want to say is basically what this graph shows is that for example for potatoes in 2012 we are already cheaper organically. For wheat we will be cheaper in 2016. For cotton in 2018. For rice 2018. Sugar beets today. Sugar cane 2020. Basically, all of them within the next 10 years will, got, will get cheaper uh, only on these indicators. Now, if you imagine putting all, all the other indicators in, how much faster would we come to the break even? So, to conclude, I want to thank you very much. I, I hope we are going on with this work. I want to assure you that this will help us on our common strive for, for a better future. I want to assure you that me as a farmer and as a social entrepreneur, I will work on the inspirations I got over the last two days and make my indicators better. But I want to also tell you that I believe 100% that within the next 20, 30 years, we will be the mainstream. You may think I'm a dreamer, uh, these crazy people from Egypt, but I have, and we had in Africa, and the whole world, an inspiration, the late, uh, Nelson Mativa Mandela, uh, who passed away yesterday and who said, it always seems impossible until it's done. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> <laughs>